Hello everyone, welcome back to another United Pop tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be doing something new, actually. Today we're going to be taking a look at um, how to do some of the um, very first things that you need to know for character design. So um, we've started a new class at United Pop for character design. And uh, in that class we're going to be uh, learning some basic anatomy, we're going to be learning some uh, shape language and creating volumes and stuff like that and using those skills then to design our own characters. Now one of the students came to me with a question about how we could start uh, creating a gesture for this uh, lady right here. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, gesture drawing is basically where you take um, you take a certain pose or uh, a certain uh, action that somebody's doing and you try to distill it down to its very most basic components basically uh, and there's there's two things that we did in the class already we did some um, deconstruction this is where we actually draw volumes onto the picture and then also draw volumes uh, using the picture just as reference in order to get a better idea of where to place all the limbs but gesture drawing is actually even simpler and it's usually where a lot of people start when they start doing character art so that's where we're what we're going to be doing today as well um, so let's just get started. Now, the thing with gesture drawing is, is that you usually don't start with um, drawing anything that you see, but you sort of start by observing uh, what's happening in, in the pose or in the picture in this case. So one of the ways we can do this is uh, what I learned when I was in art school is we sort of have to imagine uh, where the energy is flowing through the body. So Right here we have a, uh, a picture of a lady who is in the air and she's holding a bow and she, she's jumping up and she's stretching her, her legs apart. Um, and it's a very sort of, I would say, classic, you know, Greek hero pose or so, something in that fashion. Um, but, you know, you can imagine if you were doing this yourself that you need to uh, jump in the air, you need to, you know, spread your legs uh, apart, you need to tension uh, the string on the bow, uh, and she also has her, her head sort of uh, looking upwards a little bit. So there's a lot of movement going on in the body. Um, and that's the first thing that we sort of want to try uh, and get a grip of with, uh, with uh gesture drawing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to try and see if I can sort of find where I think that all the energy is uh, flowing in the body. And obviously she uh, pushed off from the ground to get into the air. So there is something like this going on where she uh, pushes her entire body off the ground and then uh, takes on this pose. Um, so there's a, there's a force that's almost completely uh, stretching to the tip of her toe that's going up uh, through the leg and into her torso. Now her torso itself is is in a bit of a, um, a curved uh, posture like this. She's really pushing her, uh, her chest forward and sort of curving or arching her back in order to get this pose. Um, and the way that you can think of gesture drawing as well <clears throat> is drawing a lot of S shapes, uh, a lot of S shapes and a lot of C shapes. So, um, for instance, if we look at the, or if we try to imagine the spine, uh, you'll see that the spine uh, almost always have sort, of, has sort of has a natural curve to it. Um, and so that's something that you can sort of use as your guide to uh, see where where um, all of these uh, forces travel and how they start at the feet and all go all the way up to the to the uh, head and to the face uh, where she really projects her gaze upward um, or actually she projects it in, in forward to, to see where she's shooting but she's actually tilting her head backwards a little bit um, and so if we do that, we can sort of start to get an idea of where uh, this force is going uh, uh, from from her from her leg upwards, and it's doing probably something like this, um, and then it arrives at her head, um, and it goes out the top of her head somewhere over there, um, and then she also is holding um, the bow, of course, which takes uh, a certain amount of force to pull a string back. So there's definitely some tension going on in the shoulders and in the in, in her arm. Um, and there's also um, some sort of, uh, what would you call it? She, she, she's 
stiffening her arm to keep the bow in place, basically. Um, now the the leg uh, that she's pointing backward, um, it's 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 a bit hard to tell whether she jumps up from one leg or from two legs, and she sort of spread them apart like this, um, or maybe she jumped from a sort of like a crouching position and the, her leg just flew backwards but uh, at the end of the day we know that both legs are connected to the spine as well and connected to the hips so uh, there's something like this going on where um, you know the the force that she's pushing down with to get up in, into the air also meets uh, her other leg uh, in her uh, pelvis area now if we disable the um, uh, the picture real quick you can see that now we have sort of like the most most basic thing that you can have in terms of a um, of a uh, gesture uh, but notice that this doesn't look like some sort of stick figure um, even though it's very simple um, it's not the same as a stick figure you know if, if I were to finish this off real quick I would sort of make like a C shape for her uh, for her head that sort of fo follows her jaw upwards in that direction so um, this is like the most basic um, form of a, a human. But if you were to draw this, um, because that's one of the, the comments that I g get from a lot of people when you show them this for the first time, like, isn't this just like drawing a stick figure? But it actually isn't, because if you think of a stick figure, you usually start with the head, and then you get like a line going down, which is supposed to be the neck and the torso, which is kind of weird to begin uh, to begin with, because when you think about it, the neck, uh, even though the, the skull connects to the spine and, and uh, the spine connects to the torso, uh, in between you, you have a neck as well, which is very flexible and uh, has a lot of um, different positions that, that it can take. So that that's a bit strange to begin with but then if you were to draw this like a stick figure you would probably do something like this where uh, there's always some sort of uh, some sort of bend in the in the legs and then the arms would be something like this um, I guess and now you can see that if I were to draw this like a stick figure you don't really get the uh, the same uh, sort of intention in the in this in the form of the of the body <clears throat> and what i mean by that is that in this uh shape right here or in this um, little study even though it might not be entirely clear what's happening it's much clearer that there is some sort of motion going on and that's because this kind of shape is really static um, whenever you have straight lines with hard edges you get a really static um, static posture and so that's something that we want to try to avoid when we're doing uh, gesture drawing we, we, we don't want to uh, make too many hard lines and straight lines even though this is a pretty straight line there's still a little bit of a curve to it and so that's what gesture drawing really all it com uh, comes down to is it's all about getting uh, that motion in there and getting that flow uh, that we're talking about so the way I'm going to uh, proceed with this is just um, I'm going to do some more work on, on this uh, figure and we're going to see if we can get some more um, C, C shapes and S shapes in there and see if we can get a bit of a better representation of this actual pose. So one of the things that you could, for instance, uh, start taking a look at is the, the back of her leg over here. Um, her leg is uh, pretty straight and pointing backwards, or it's as straight as somebody could keep it, but it's not completely straight. You know, if you were to sort of imagine the, the bones that are uh, in, in her leg, you would probably come to the conclusion that um, uh, you know her bones are pretty straight but of course they're surrounded by muscle tissue and skin and, all, and fat and all that stuff uh, so that gives them a very uh, a different shape and a different um, a different direction basically it's, it's very hard to keep your leg completely straight um, so if we for instance start taking a look at the the back of her uh, leg over here uh, we can see that some of these C shapes that I was talking about, we can all, almost completely copy them from the um, from the picture. So you can sort of start to imagine that every muscle group in in her leg uh, is is one of these uh, C shapes. And if we just take our time to explore that a little bit, uh, something you'll probably hear me 
saying more in this tutorial is uh, we sort of have to explore where these uh, lines are because it's not it's not immediately obvious you know uh, we're, we're talking about a, a human body or you know an anatomy an uh, anatomy human anatomy and it's it, it can be even though there are rules to it, it can still be quite messy because every body is different and every uh, every line is sort of uh, different to to the next one. But there are some some um, similarities in in, in these um, uh, in these studies. So anyway, um, I'm rambling off again. <laughs> uh, the, the the most important part about this is that, that we sort of uh, understand that uh, these C shapes that we're drawing. Um, they they don't sort of end where um, where her outline ends. So um, if I were to draw this sort of as a um, as a uh, as an outline or as a silhouette, I would do something like this, and I would just sort of follow the shape of her body and do something like that. But then again, if we disable our uh, picture, you can see that even though it's curvy, and you can sort of imagine how a, uh, that that could be a leg, uh, it's still pretty static again and this is because this is just one continuous line and it doesn't inform any of the uh, depth that we have in an actual human body so again that's why we usually stick to these very simple lines and these very simple shapes because um, we sort of have to imagine that every muscle group is its own little pocket of anatomy that we have to try to understand so that's why i always uh, draw in pretty uh, simple lines, uh, and I don't let them stop uh, where the where the outline stops. So you can see that if I do something like this, um, even though it doesn't really look like a leg, this uh, informs you much more about actually the 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 shape and the form of this body. Now, of course, we can sort of play around with this as well. So maybe instead of doing something like this, we do something like that, where um, the sort of the what I call the 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 upper uh, the thigh area of the of the of the leg is sort of like the dominant shape, and then uh, the the rest of the shapes are sort of uh, subject to it. Um, but that's why we are using this picture because we can sort of try different things out and we can uh, experiment with it. <coughs> so um, for her back, I'm just going to do something like this, and this is again a good example of that. You can sort of imagine that if if I were to draw a, a human figure, that I'm not gonna um, I'm not just going to uh, let the outline dictate the shape of the body because as uh, we've learned in some of our previous classes, and I haven't recorded any tutorials for those yet, I might in the future, but uh, the, the body actually consists of several volumes. So there's a there's like sort of an egg shape over here, uh, something like that. Come on. That's good enough. And then there's also an egg shape over here. And these two volumes sort of um, balance on top of each other a little bit, um, which insinuates or, or gives you the, this uh, idea of sort of flexibility in the body. Um, but again, um, if, if we're talking about th things that have volume, they usually overlap and they sort of intersect. And so if we were to just draw the, the outline of the body, then we would miss all of that information. And we do want to try to capture that in our, uh, in our gesture, even though it's just a bunch of simple lines. So I'm going to do something like this. And this is a good example as well uh, of what I'm talking about, where you can see that the, um, uh, the hips sort of... Um, or the, actually, I should maybe use uh, this as an example of, of uh, where her clothing uh, separates the rest of uh, her body. So you can sort of imagine that um, her hips sort of start over here, and then uh, from underneath there, uh, her, her crotch sort of starts to sh uh, uh, begin this new C shape. Um, so that's another good way of sort of uh, insinuating or, or, or showing that there's depth there, there's volume. Um, so the, the crotch area actually comes from behind the, the thigh and then goes all the way up to, again, sort of uh, make a C shape. Um, and then we have our chest, which is something like this. Uh, again, you can maybe follow you know follow the lines of her clothing a little bit if that helps you in that regard um and then her feet which make a c shape like that 
Um, and now you can start to see that we we get a better picture of what it actually is that we're drawing. Um, so again, it's all about sort of experimenting, and um, I would implore you to try and tr try these lines a couple of times to sort of get a feeling of uh, which lines you um, you think are are the correct ones and uh, which are sort of um, less accurate to the shape of the body. So, you know, it's 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 actually more about sort of trying to turn your mind off a little bit and uh, stop trying to think what you're looking at and sort of draw what you're observing. And so not to think of this as just like a human body, because again, you might be tempted to really quickly uh, start drawing some, some stick figure like uh, shapes. And that's what we want to want to avoid with this. So um, there we go. And then, of course, we have the arms, which um, there there is going to probably going to be a little bit of a bend in in here, because simply because it's you know the elbow is a pretty hard uh, hard line. Um, and just you know try to keep it a bit a bit loose. You know don't 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 try to. Um, be too perfect with it because again it's also it's not just about getting a somewhat accurate representation of what we're seeing but it's also about sort of exploring your own um exp or expanding your own skills in terms of anatomy And you can see that the lines that I'm drawing, they're simple, but they are very, um, what would you call it? They are very committed. So I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not doing this where I'm just sort of slowly following the contour of her, of her body uh, with little uh, dots or lines. That's not something that um, helps us uh, get a good picture of that, that force that we're talking about and getting those motions um, depicted in our, in our final image. Um, so it's really about trying to make bold. They don't have to be. Um, they don't have to be super heavy. Like they. They don't. They can be a bit transparent or a bit sketchy. But we do want to sort of uh, sh show them to be um, committed. So there's not a lot of hesitation in these lines. I'm like going from here to there, and it's just like a a, a nice uh, C curve. Um, Of course, we have the head. Um, it's gonna be this one can be a bit tricky because whenever people have hair or something, you can maybe get a bit lost in where the actual skull is located. So I'm actually gonna try to do something like this where. It's a bit more of a circle. Uh, one of the things that I also often get asked in the classes is how do you um, how do you get more or, or how do you get better or get more comfortable with with you know uh, getting nice clean lines? And one of the things that I uh, often tell my students, one of the first things that they can try is instead of drawing from the wrist, is draw from your shoulder. Now that doesn't literally mean um, you know use your shoulder to draw it sort of means that start the motion in your shoulder and let it flow through your arm sort of like what we're doing with gesture drawing you know try to imagine that there's what that's where the motion is coming from it's coming from your shoulder and it's going through your uh, arm and your elbow to your wrist and to your fingers because um, one thing that i often see that uh, with uh, new students is that they um they when they start drawing they they just use their wrists and they make like these little uh, arches everywhere and and because that uh, the, it's difficult for them to get a straight line uh, onto the paper in this case into Photoshop um, they start to uh, get really tensed up and they and they start to grip their uh, pen really tightly and start to sort of force 
uh, a straight line out of their wrist, which is impossible almost because your wrist almost always makes a curve when you move it from side to side. So what I would really advise you is just to, to, to try and imagine that the motion starts in your in your shoulder and goes through your elbow to your wrist and your fingers, uh, and also try to keep a bit of a lighter uh, bit of a lighter grip on your pen, you know, because it's not really it's not about getting um, a perfect line it's about getting a smooth line basically now every now and again my photoshop decides to crash so i'm gonna gonna restart my uh, thing real quick i'm just gonna save it um call it anatomy anatomy practice two There we go. Uh, I don't know why Photoshop does that. It does it every now and again, but here we are. We're back again. Okay. So if we disable our picture, uh, we can already start to see that we get a pretty nice gesture going on here. Um, now, one of the things that I really like about this particular um, particular pose that she's taking is that you can you can really sort of imagine her right the sort of her right shoulder and her left shoulder working in unison. And you can see that because what she's doing, she's trying to pull, uh, pull the string back. Her uh, shoulders actually start to uh, uh, twist a little bit, so she she doesn't actually have her her torso, her torso completely straight. So if you if you were to imagine sort of the center line of her body, you can imagine that it sort of starts right here. So it starts right here, there um, base of her neck, sort of at her collarbone, and then it does something like this, um, where it sort of goes underneath, like so. Something like that. So that's really interesting to see that there's there's a force going on, sort of like in 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 this direction where she's pulling her her right shoulder back, and she's sort of pushing her left shoulder forward in order to uh, get this tension in between her uh, left hand and her right hand. So again, it's all about sort of trying to really observe what's actually going on and not just sort of looking at what's going on. Um, I can probably do an entire tutorial on the difference between observing and looking at things. <laughs> uh, that's uh, actually one of the most important skills to have as a uh, 3D artist or, or as a uh, character artist, I think, is to sort of uh, know how to observe, um, which maybe sounds a bit uh, counterintuitive because a lot of people think that you know, just looking at something is the same as observing, but it's not. When you're observing, you're sort of in your mind trying to deconstruct what's going on and uh, try to uh, simplify everything that you see. So what's really cool is that you can imagine this force uh, from her shoulder sort of going down and around and sort of uh, ending right here at her waist, uh, which is causing this this uh, twist in this way to to happen. So. That's sort of how we observe things. We should just try to imagine what's going on in her body and where all the forces are going. Now again, this, this kind of exercise isn't really there to create a perfectly anatomically correct uh, representation of a human being. It's more there to sort of uh, practice and get a better understanding of that when you draw a figure, when you draw anatomy, it's not just about sort of recreating what anatomy is. It's also about thinking how anatomy works and what it actually means to have motion in things. So there we go. That would be a pretty you know, pretty good start for uh, for a gesture drawing. Um, uh, I'm just gonna go in here and make these lines a bit bolder, so I can sort of really show that this is her wrist right here, something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just it's just there to sort of give us an idea of uh, things that are going on. Now, this was uh, sort of like a warm up. Um, sort of get an idea of uh, what it's like to draw a gesture like this. But really what we want to start doing is not just tracing everything on a photograph. We want to start uh, sketching and uh, drawing it uh, using just using it as reference. So I think I'm actually going to 
crop this picture a little bit so I have a bit more room. Uh, where's my crop tool? There it is. Uh, oh no, wait, that's... Um, actually, let me just do this and just cut half it away. Oh, it's not directly editable. That's the problem. Um, let's see, rasterize layer. Boom, there we go. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm going to do the same thing that I did here, but I'm not going to use the photographs uh, photograph sort of as a backdrop to trace everything. I'm, I'm just want to uh, try and uh, sort of draw it freehand, uh, just using it as reference. So again, I'm just going to start by trying to sort of get an idea of um, what what the forces are that are uh, going on and uh, where these um, where these end up, where they go, where they meet, all that stuff that we just sort of talked about. And you can get, you know, a bit, a bit more, um, what would you call it, adventurous with with your freehand drawings. In fact, I would encourage you to maybe exaggerate some of these uh, shapes that are going on over here because it, it's really useful to uh, try and sort of uh, have a comparison between, uh, you know, an actual photograph and perhaps one of these uh, traced. Um, um, figures and then your own freehand drawing so you can sort of see what you understand and uh, where your understanding uh, understanding is lacking in terms of drawing gesture um, so it's just good to have that comparison now i, I think i'm actually may start with the head real quick um, just so i have a, a bit of a better um, understanding of scale so i'm just gonna Draw like a simple. It's very hard to draw and talk at the same time. I've started to notice. <laughs> Actually, no, that doesn't really work. Um, you know, this is the, and this is part of the learning process as well. Like, how do you actually start with something like this? Do you start with the head? Do you start with the legs? You know, what's most? Uh, what, what what seems to be the 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 best? approach is also something that sort of differs per person so I think I want to start with the um, yeah do something like that so we have like this is her her torso that's uh, uh, curving backwards and she's uh, tensioning her spine uh, curving her spine arching her spine whatever you want to call it and then the other leg sort of starts from here and goes backwards like that um, and then we get up here and we have that that C going on that sort of defines her her uh, right arm and then the other one that sort of holds the bow like that and then her head is somewhere up here uh, it's just big I tend to draw things a bit larger whenever I'm drawing freehand um, so just keep that in mind so um, yeah so these are sort of where the energy is going and let's see here i think i want to start maybe with her torso so she's sort of tensioning it and you'll notice that you know when i'm when i'm drawing things freehand i'm i'm spending a lot more time sort of exploring shapes and and lines and sort of trying to get an idea of um you know what what lines work, which, what lines don't work. Um, and yeah, so it's all about that exploration. It's just by trying trying things out and trying to sort of get a better, uh, better feel for the actual shape of the figure. So let me get something like this. And actually, actually let me, yeah, I think I'm gonna use this as guide for her her thigh something like that and then we get her um, oops and then we have her shape for her um, what's it called? A uh, calf. <laughs> and it's okay, you know, it's okay for things to be sort of sketchy and, and um, uh, stylized because, again, it's not about 
it's not about the perfect representation of of uh, of the human form. It's more about it's more about um, finding um, or getting a better feel for uh, motion and for energy, and, and that will allow us to draw poses much much more that are much more interesting than just like boring static ones that don't have any life to them. And then. We have her arm, which does something like this. And her head is actually a bit higher up. It's more over here. And she's gazing up like that she's looking that way so it's something like that that's going on there we go I'm starting to notice that her legs are becoming a bit long, so I think I actually want to try and um, reduce this down. Like her, her calf is more like that, really. It's not going to be that long. Sometimes when I draw characters, I, I, I tend to draw like a lot of like heroes and hero poses, and heroes they. Um, when you think about like a hero um, shape or a hero pose, oftentimes they have like very exaggerated, um, um, very exaggerated anatomy. They have very long legs, quite tiny torsos that are like super mus muscular and stuff. And um, you know that's 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 sort of how how anatomy study began to begin with you know with the ancient greeks when they wanted to get a representation of the human body um for their for their wonderful sculptures that they did back in the days they um you know they would often exaggerate things you know if, especially if it was a sculpture of like a um uh, you know, a, a god or, or like a famous warrior, they would really give them really long legs and, and quite long, uh, long arms. And in, in case of men, they would really give them that classical, you know, V shape uh, with very broad shoulders, very tiny waists. And that that has been sort of taken to the extreme in, in modern times where, you know, when you look at like Marvel heroes and stuff, they are like insanely ripped with insanely small um insanely small uh, waists and very broad shoulders and stuff like that. So there's something actually going on in the middle here that I'm sort of struggling with. And I think it's just the fact that this um, doesn't really make sense. It has to be more, uh, or as it would say, less thick. There's actually, so one of the things that you, uh, one of the things that I always sort of look for when I'm drawing a torso is this line right here and and sort of like the center line or the or the line that sort of um yeah dictates where the uh where the belly button is uh relative to the to the um uh, to your chest bone and stuff like that um especially in this side view um it's it's pretty clear that um you know when we start to do some more anatomy you, you'll start to notice that there are muscles here that run like this uh and then that meat muscles that are going like this um, and they sort of almost compress I wouldn't really say compress but they sort of keep your chest together your chest area and that's also why we also uh, always draw like a volume like this and then a volume like that to indicate uh, uh, what the human body 
uh, is like in terms of volumetric shapes because um, these lines they always sort of converge they sort of they sort of meet uh, somewhere you know above uh, the um, uh, just above the uh, pelvis or the hips so it's, it's more it's more like this actually what I'm trying to do and then of course she has her bosom so goes around her chest And you can see that I'm, I'm not erasing like everything because again it's all about experimentation and exploration so you really want to try to give yourself that uh grant yourself that opportunity to have some some uh happy accidents as they call where you may not may not have attended intended to draw that thing that you were drawing but it it, it has uh given you an opportunity to um uh to create a nicer looking line and i'm also sort of struggling with her head a little bit and i think it's because might just be a little bit too big so i'm gonna try and redo this if i'm mumbling a lot i apologize i'm still sort of new to creating all of these tutorials um, but it's it's quite difficult to sort of um, <laughs> explain what you're doing while you're doing it and make it make sense so um, yeah <laughs> I'm just gonna do something with her arms because this is not working out for me right now. This is another thing that that you'll uh, want to try to get uh, you know better at when you um, want to improve your your art skills. Is sometimes you just gotta give something a rest and move on to something else because you can look at something for hours and hours or try it for hours and hours and it might just not make sense in that moment, you know, and you just need to look somewhere else or try something something else real quick in order for it to make sense uh, later on. So, yeah. One thing that's also that I'm sort of noticing right now is also really, um, um, which is also really uh, important for this particular uh, mannequin or this particular photograph is that there's um, that's quite a lot of perspective in it. It's actually it's, it's not the mo it's not the easiest of um, of studies to begin with because uh, if you, for instance, take a look at um, her, how her head is is uh, situated in this in this photograph it's we're, we're not sort of looking at the uh, we're, we're not really looking at her um, at the side of her face we're sort of looking at sort of like the bottom you can almost see the entire uh, the, uh, bottom of her her jawline uh, and we're sort of looking up at her basically and, and, and it's probably because she's jumping in the air and you can also sort of imagine that uh, you know if her shoulders are over here uh, her, sh her shoulder joints and the other one is over here somewhere I think uh, and we sort of draw a line in between that and then we try to sort of extrapolate a box um, around that we we would be sort of looking at the uh, bottom side or at least partially the bottom side of that box as well um, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of perspective going on in this one which can make it a bit tricky Yeah. So, so that would sort of be the perspective that we have, and it changes depending on which part of the body you're looking at. Because if we go all the way down here, um, like if I were to give this uh, picture like an imaginary, um, imaginary horizon, it would be somewhere around here, I think, or maybe even a little bit higher. Which means that um, everything above the horizon line, we're looking at it. Uh, from the bottom up and everything below it we're looking at from the top down so again if you can imagine her her hips um, uh, as being a box uh, it's a bit tilted so that might be a bit tricky but it would be probably something like uh, give me a second here uh, I just need to it would be something like um, like this probably yeah Okay, so in this case, it's, it's pretty difficult because it's tilted as well, pretty extremely. But um, we're still sort of looking at the top of her ankle as well. So we're sort of, you know, we're sort of looking at it from, from up here. And that's because it's way down below the horizon line. But everything above the horizon line, we're looking up, uh, up at. So it's, it's mostly the bottom that we see. 
so that's the, sometimes that can be a bit tricky and you, you got to try and sort of um, again this comes down to what, observing everything and not just drawing conclusions based on uh, what, you, what you're seeing in the picture but trying to sort of put this um, lady as a mannequin into a 3D space right um, Yeah, something like that. It's a it's a pretty difficult one. This one, I'm not gonna lie. It's because, and again, this is usually the uh, case with more dynamic poses. When you have a pretty static pose, like somebody's just posing for a picture, then um, there's there's less of this going on because it's usually from pretty much your front or the back. So things aren't really including each other uh, a whole bunch. Am I Photoshop cra crash again? Give me a second. Um, so with occluding, we, we mean that, you know, things are in front of other things. If, you know, if she has a, a hip joint over here, that means that her other hip joint is somewhere over there and they're almost completely, you know, behind each other. And that can be a bit tricky. Um, so yeah, this was the same with her shoulder joints and stuff like that. And her hand is in front of her shoulder as well. So anyway, um, quick uh, I was just going off, uh, going off on a quick um, tangent there but uh, back to uh, back to our uh, freehand sketch so um, so again I think I'm just going to use some of her her clothing lines to help and try and get a better picture of what's going on so it's going to be something like this. I think, yeah, I think what's going on here as well is that their chest is just too small. It's more like this. Um, so again, because it's slightly rotated towards us, her center line would be somewhere over here. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of these things that I'm, that I'm sort of discovering, I, I didn't really see uh, when I started doing the... Um, uh, doing the gesture and that's because that's sort of part of it you know it's you you think you got something right and then you compare it to your actual photograph and it starts to make sense that you actually you know missed something or you you sort of forgot something uh, or thought that a certain line was flowing one way and it turned out it was actually flowing the other way um, stuff like that you know it's again it's all about sort of experimenting and and trying things out and seeing what works. So I'm just going to get rid of this line. You can, you don't have to keep the um, sort of like the, the, what would you call them? The force lines um, in your, in your final uh, gesture all the time. You can sort of uh, take them out at some point. If you, if you think you, you got a, you got it where you want it. And again, our legs are going to be pretty long, but I'm fine with that. You know, it's, it's, it's all about practicing. If her legs are going to be a bit uh, heroic, then uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, I'm just going to erase this real quick because I can't actually see what I'm supposed to draw. There we go. So yeah, so like I was saying earlier, um, um, you know, it's, it's more clear with men, but women have this too, where like the chest is really sort of a V shape that sort of converges. 
uh, anatomically speaking. So it can be really useful to draw to draw or put more emphasis on this line to give you really an idea of where the uh, the hips end, so to speak, and the chest starts because they can, you know, they they, they sort of flow into each other. There's there's your there's your pelvis and your rib cage, which are really sort of like your main two main parts that make up your torso. But there's like a little bit of piece of no man's land in between where where it's just connected by your spine, and so you don't have the, as many uh, as much volume there. You do have muscles there, fortunately, but um, usually the muscles on your chest or on your uh, hips are larger and more pronounced. So. Um, and it actually goes back even a little bit further, like this. And then it comes up a little bit more shallow. Something like that. And again, this is a this is a tricky uh, tricky example of, of uh, how to get this correct because there's so much stuff occluding each other. You know, her, her her shoulders are there, her arms, and then behind there is her chest, and then behind there is another shoulder. It can really become um, quite difficult to sort of uh, keep a track of what line you're actually drawing. But it, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna just start with her arm like this, and then it goes up like that. And then we get something like this going on. And again, because some of these lines are becoming really short, like these ones, because we're, we're sort of looking down her upper arm towards her uh, shoulder. You know, the, the, her elbow is much closer to the camera than her shoulder. Um, because of that, there's a lot of depth going on, and, and we sort of have to keep, keep that into account when we're drawing uh, these lines, is that... Uh, you know, sometimes even though they're small uh, and seemingly insignificant, they can be really important because if I were to make this longer, um, now it would seem like her uh, her arm is much flatter towards her, her chest, but she's really sticking out her elbow towards us. And we can sort of get a little bit of a sense because because of the light, but mostly because these... these um, um, the, these lines are just all foreshortened and they're occluding each other. So, actually I'm, I'm really sort of getting uh, having a lot of trouble with defining how large her, her head is because um, one thing that happens you know the 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 the, um, the neck attaches to the back of the skull somewhere around here and then it sort of flows down like that but you have to be careful because if you place it too far up or too far down, it starts to look really strange. Like if, if I were to attach it up here and do something like that, she would get like this very thick like panther neck almost, like this super mus muscular thing. And if I place it too far in the middle, it just looks like she's a stick figure. So um, yeah, so so you, you got to try and find where, where the right place is, where the um, actual... Um, actual connection is and um, this is something that's that's a bit hard to explain really it's it's more about you know practicing this stuff uh, as often as you can and then um, sort of getting a feel for that and her head makes a so it'd be So she has her um, I'm making a lot of noise outside so I hope you guys can't hear that but if you can um, yeah I think they're working on the roof or something <laughs> Mm. 
Okay, there we go. So now, yeah. So yeah. So what I'm, what I was talking about. She has quite. Um, she's quite gifted in the um, chest area, so to speak. So one of the things that I'm sort of struggling with is that her her uh, her her bosom, so to speak, is actually occluding a lot of her. It's almost all the way out here. And again, it's because her her torso is actually rotated slightly uh, towards us. So I need to try and redo that. It's actually all the way. It's all the way up here almost. So we get something like that. And then this actually and that's a train going by I think yeah that's better Okay, so her arm sort of extends all the way over here, and then she has her fist. I'm not going to sp spend a lot of time on the hands, because this is more about getting the movement of the body correct. And actually, now I can see that I made another mistake as well, in terms of the... Um, well, it's actually it's not that that huge of a mistake, but you can see that in my uh, free hunt hand version, she um, her her upper arm and her uh, forearm really makes sort of like a V shape like that, and you can see that for instance in mine that's almost not there, so it actually has to go down even further her arm to where it's something like this. There we go. That's what I was going for. That's better. And now, of course, I erased all of this again, so <laughs> I have to restart. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of getting around uh, erasing things and starting over when it comes to doing stuff like this, because again, it's it's exercise. You know, we're we're exploring, we're trying things out, we're trying to get a sense of how all of this works together. Um, so I really wanted to see something like. And her, her top actually sort of disappears behind her shoulder. So and maybe your, you know, your female figure, if you're using a female figure, comes out a bit muscular, a bit too, uh, a bit too uh, male-like, a bit too. Uh, um, what's it called? Non-feminine. That's fine. Um, the difference in, uh, you know, anatomically between men and women are actually not as uh, big as you would think. It's just that we are, um, we are evolved and we're sort of trained to really notice them really quickly. But, uh, anatomy and anatomically, Anatomy is still a difficult word for me. <laughs> Anatomically, men and women are actually um, actually they 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 are they're not that that far apart to be uh, completely honest. Especially when it comes to like the muscle groups and stuff like that. And I'm really sort of nitpicking, trying to get that line right. But again, you know, you don't have to uh, spend so much time on it. It's all about, still, it's all about practicing. So, and her 
like for instance her jaw actually points more upward like this so it's more like her head her head is sort of looking in that way and she's looking through the bottom of her eyes that's what's going on there we go so i actually want to sort of change this up a little bit threats more like that perhaps her head keeps getting bigger and bigger for some reason but that's that's okay with me That's starting to look like something. What's really useful or what's some of the tricks that you can sort of use, um, and this is a very specific example because she she's, you know, tensioning a bow, which is a very specific movement. But um, there's literally a force going from this hand to this hand, which is some, some situated in the middle that, that's pulling um, the, the bow and the string apart. And so they have to be pretty much on the same plane because if, if you do this differently, then, you know, if you were to pull uh, down too, uh, too far, then this part of the bow would go up. Like this would go that way and the bottom would go that way, which means you wouldn't be able to actually aim for your target that's somewhere over there. So the, again, this is sort of, it comes back to the very first thing that we did is drawing these forces um to think about where the energy and the forces are going and which way they're pushing and pulling and and all that stuff really helps you to get a sense of where all of the body parts are supposed to be located because we know that she's tensioning a bow and that her hands need to be on one line so if we are drawing here and we end up like for instance you could say with my version that her hand uh, gets too low then the whole holding the bow part doesn't make sense anymore. So again, that's why we're sort of starting with, or that's why we're putting so much emphasis on drawing forces, even though that might seem like a very sort of strange or uh, floaty thing to say. But that is actually what it comes down to, is just imagining where all of those forces are going. And, you know, in my version, it's not perfect, but again we've learned something we've learned that uh, if we ever you know uh, start drawing more dynamic poses then we really need to pay a lot of attention to how the um, how the different the different uh, forces involved are sort of shaping the body because that's ultimately what a pose is it's just you apply or you or something else applying force to you which makes your body uh, take on a certain uh, yeah pose a certain shape so that's what's going on and that's really all it is Okay.
Um, so yeah, we spend a lot of time on the torso and the upper part of the body. We still need, need to do the sort of the uh, the bottom part, even though I think that's uh, a lot simpler because the bottom part is just um, trying to draw where the legs are going. The other thing that I just noticed is that she actually she pretty much pinches her her backside to to a very small point while while her um, her front side, sort of where her, her belly is located, is much more open, uh, facing um, facing to the front. So when you have you know little guides in here, like the lines of the uh, clothing that she's wearing, you know you can take a look at that for, as well. For instance, and sort of try to extrapolate from that where you actually have to start drawing stuff. So I know that her 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 chest comes down. Uh, like this, um, and then there's not that much space, and then her glute uh, starts immediately. So, yeah, that's maybe a bit too exaggerated, but probably something more like this. Yeah, there we go. Again, it's not 100% accurate, but we're just learning over here. We're just practicing. And I hope that, for instance, when you look at this um, this line right here, that sort of illustrates the importance of letting those lines continue, even if it's just a little bit, because it gives you so much more information about what's actually what you're actually looking at. Because now we can sort of start to imagine that this entire area right here is like a volume of muscle, right? Like this entire part right here is just uh, one muscle group, right? And not only do we know it's one muscle group, but we know that it uh, includes like the glutes that are on the back over here, which sort of run like that. So, and it also attaches to the calf like like this, you know. That's really all we're doing here. So we're sort of trying to give the impression of those those volumes that are going on. And so even though it might look like a small difference between this and just drawing an outline, there is actually a difference and it's, it's quite an important difference as well. So.
And my brush is gone again. Restart. There we go. <laughs> so we're nearly done. Um, let me check how long I've been recording for, to be honest. It's already been an hour again. So I think it's it's just about a good time to wrap up. I'm just going to try to finish this, uh, this lag real quick. That doesn't really look like her foot, to be honest. What does her foot look like? It's, it's much more, there we go. It's like this, there we go. It's much more pronounced. Sometimes if you're not sure, you know, which which line sh uh, lines should continue and which should, should be um, ended. If you look at this photograph real quick, um, if you imagine the, 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 the kneecap being right here, right? It's shaped like this a little bit, like, like that. Um, and then there's the, the, the knees uh, or the, the uh, muscles that actually make up the knee. Um, it's very, fairly clear that this line continues and sort of ends right here. Um, and then because you have the knee over here, it sort of creates like a, just a almost teeny tiny little ledge. And then this one starts, right? So if you want to simplify that, really the best way to do it is to just keep continuing this line downward a little bit and maybe you can curve it inward a little bit, maybe not that much, and then just start with your another with with your uh, second C curve basically, and do something like that. And then the back is a bit strange; um, it sort of curves in a little bit like that as well until we have something that looks like this. And it's barely noticeable um, in some cases, but it's it's more just there for your for yourself to practice with and to. Uh, uh, get more familiar with and actually I think what I should do is maybe make this a lot shorter whoops to where it's more something like this and then there's like a there we go like another s curve going on pretty subtle Okay, so um, I hope this was a uh, informative uh, tutorial, an informative online class. We're going to be practicing uh, with this a lot more um, as well, but um, you can really get a head start if you practice with this a lot at home. Um, and just really try to, again, I can't preface this enough, try to sort of imagine the forces that are shaping this pose, that are going on in the body, that are dictating the way uh, this lady in this case is moving around. So um, yeah, look for this, uh, uh, more of these tutorials on my uh, YouTube uh, channel if you want to. I also have some tutorials in 3D and I see you, I'll see you guys in the next one.